Hi everyone, welcome into the Linfield College Women's Soccer Weekly Coaches Report here on the Linfield Sports Network. I'm Joe Stewart, alongside with me as always, Coach Steve Simmons. Coach, how you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Like you said, coming in, it's a little bit, a little bit of this, a little bit of that every day, right? Yeah, it's um, it's uh, always uh, something to do around here at Linfield, but uh, it's great because. Um, you know, the, the student athletes um, of all the sports, they, they work hard in the classroom, they're working hard in, in their respective sports, and um, you know, we wanna make sure we give them the best chance to be successful, so it's been a lot of fun. Definitely, so we're into the season now for real, it's the conference season, uh, you're one and one now after a big win against Pacific, 4-1, and then a 3-1 loss on the road to Willamette uh, on Saturday. Uh, a big thing you've talked about with this team is going out and yes, beating the teams that you know you can beat and winning big in those yeah. games, but also having the confidence to execute mm -hmm. against tougher opponents. Mm -hmm. What have you seen and where do you think this team is as far as getting to the level they need to be to execute in those tougher situations like on the road against a good squad like Willamette? Yeah, you know, uh, after after the game, I think we were all pretty disappointed with the result and, and then when we looked on the video, um, it, it was it, it wasn't as bad as, as, as we thought um, you know we we knew, we knew, we do need to take our chances because we're creating chances we, we have to finish so there's a technical finishing piece that uh, we've addressed with the players they know it so we get back to work on addressing those issues it's just so much harder to create chances in soccer you know it just because you know goals goals are don't come come easy and so but we're doing that we're creating good chances. We just need to finish our chances, and then just uh, dial in our identity a little bit more. You know, the the girls have been get uh, given a ton of information since the spring, and uh, they they've handled it really well. But when we get into the competition, like you're talking about, um, it's it doesn't it's not second nature yet. So um, we're aggressively trying to be patient and teaching them to uh, do what we do better. Um, there's really not much that uh, we need to change philosophically. It's just how we approach games, what the execution is like. You know, if you look at stats, you know, I think we we lead the team, the lead the league in goal scoring, but we're also giving up a lot of goals mm -hmm. at the same time. So, you know, um, we can tighten that piece up, uh, the the goals against, but it's so hard to score. And so I like the fact that our players are aggressive. They're on the front foot. We just need to do some things better. Um, and then that'll come with some time. But the, the girls, their attitude has been great. You know, they, they, they don't hang their heads. They're disappointed, but they, they get on with it. So it's been fun. Definitely. So before we get a little bit more into that offensive attack uh, and finishing those attempts, I do want to talk about one really strong aspect of finishing in this, in this offense, and that's been Sidney Kuhn. Obviously, uh, last year's Northwest Conference leading goal scorer had the 12th hat trick in program history in that Pacific win. What's it like uh, for this team and for you as a coach to just have somebody out there who you know is a reliable finisher and has that type of offensive skill in the box? Yeah, I tell you, you know, when you when you have that uh, those types of players on the team, it uh, brings confidence to everybody. And so, but with Sid, I, I'm not going to just uh, you know limit it to her finishing because obviously she, she's doing well so far. It, she's the whole package, you know. She's um, she puts the, the the time in to to be one of the fittest players. She is diligent about learning how we need to play going forward. Um, if you watch some of those goals against Pacific, she's the one that comes back in deep, gets the ball, generates the attack, and finishes it. So you're talking about like 40 and 50 yards of running from start to end. And so in that way, I think it makes it even more special. But uh, Sid's been uh, wonderful, and she get, deserves all the accolades she's earned, for sure. So now going back to the loss against Willamette, as you talked about, there there were chances in, in that game, but unfortunately you guys weren't able to score until the 83rd minute off the goal from uh, Kristen Burke. But like you said, there were chances, six corner kick attempts yeah. in the first half alone. Yeah. So what do you think at this point it's mostly just execution with get I mean like you said it's hard to score even when you do have those chances yeah. in soccer that's just the way the game goes. Do you think at this point a lot of it just comes down to execution or was there something else in that Willamette game you saw? No, you know with with finishing execution a lot of it comes down to the the technical piece but it's also the mentality. You know, you look at any sport in that moment where you have to make a play whether mm -hmm. it's a touchdown, pitch a strike, you know, um, uh, you know, go up for a jumper, uh, free throw, right? 
there are certain players that have clarity in those moments. And right now, our, 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 our kids aren't quite there. Those corner kicks are a, um, uh, you can directly connect those two, maybe not hitting the targets. And so we're hitting them straight at the keeper. She makes an easy save, goes out of bounds. Well, if we execute like we wanted to, those aren't corner kicks, they're goals. Right. So if you look at that stat in, in the Willamette game, I think we outshot them, we out corner kicked them, but we've got to convert. But uh, the other thing I'll say about Willamette, um, they're a good team. And um, I thought we let them be too comfortable on the ball. And that was in the first half. I think that was a lot of, of us giving up two goals that we would probably want back for sure. Um, but when it's all said and done, we were pushing. We get the goal. Burke gets a goal. Amity Kleknon hits the crossbar. And then we're pushing numbers up because we're going to go for it. Right. And they catch us on the break. So that's that soccer. Um, uh, but if we were going to go back and, and, and wind back the hands of time, what we'll do is make sure we get those pieces sorted out where we can take our chances, right? Take our chances and not make it so comfortable against us. So talking about creating those chances, that has definitely been a strength of the offense. Eight assists yeah. leads the Northwest Conference. McKenna Blix uh, tied for first in the Northwest Conference with three assists of her own. Can you talk about the importance of the ball movement and the passing, particularly from the corners, as we've seen in this uh, offensive system you're, you've been working with with this team? Yeah, that's a great, great point, Joe, because uh, one of the announcers, I think it was with uh, Willamette, was talking about um, uh, the fact that with our goal scorers, we have multiple assists, mm -hmm. which kind of tells you that we're collective and we share the ball and we yeah. circulate the ball. What that means for our opponents is that they should not be able to key up on two or three players. Of course, you're going to see Sid Kuhn. You're going, okay, well, we got to stop her. But we feel we have others who can also pick up the paycheck. And so that philosophy of ball circulation and getting in dangerous spots is something that we feel is going to be a strength of ours going forward because it's going to be hard to just cue one on one or two players. So the girls are getting better at it. You know, um, our idea is to dominate the ball. They know that. Um, they can sit in my office. They can tell us how, but they just have to learn how to do it better. And it's still not second nature, but it'll get there, and their, their attitude's been great. This weekend, you play host to two teams, two Northwest Conference teams that are off to good starts. Puget Sound, 4-2, and two, Lewis and Clark, 3-2-1. Two and one. Uh, Obviously, the big test there, especially is Puget Sound, friendly one of the top small college programs on the West Coast. How are you preparing uh, this team for Saturday on uh, against Puget Sound, and what are you going to be looking for to take away uh, from observing that in that match? Yeah, Puget Sound's been, you know, They've been good for a lot of years, and so you know we got you know we have respect for all of our opponents uh, in our conference. But obviously, Puget Sound, last year's conference winners, um, is is a good benchmark for our conference. But what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, can we do better than we did our last appearance? Can we look at the areas that we need to improve on and move the needle? Nothing more, nothing less. And so if the opponents to the opponents, whoever they are, um, they're going to be a test for us period. And so we're going to focus on ourselves. We're going to uh, address the things you and I just talked about. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we'll dust ourselves down and see if we have improved. All right. That'll pretty much do it for us here with our Women's Soccer Weekly Coaches Report. Coach Simmons, thanks for stopping by as always. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Great to have this guy here with us sitting down and uh, giving us some insight into the games. The Wildcats are in McMinnville both days this weekend, like we said, on Saturday hosting Puget Sound, Lewis and Clark host, uh, coming to town on Sunday. Both of those matches starting at 12 noon, and of course we'll have them for you live on the Linfield Sports Network. Thanks for joining us.